Yes, welcome to the State of the School Address 2018. Thank you for coming out tonight. And those of you who are watching via live stream, thank you for joining us as well. It will be recorded tonight so that uh, either you or someone you know can watch it later. You may want to uh, find out, you know, what did they say or what was that slide? And so we wanted to give you that opportunity. Doesn't it seem like it just it was January 1st, New Year's, and a couple bowl games in there, national championship. We won't talk about which part of the national championship. And snow and ice days were in there. We had Wintrum, and we had Winterfest, and we had more ice and snow days. We had an amazing FCS Live. How many of you were at FCS Live Saturday night? Wasn't that an incredible <laughs> experience? That was, I've heard several people say that was the best thing that fellowship has ever done, and I would agree. It was incredible from beginning to end, and there were masses that were involved uh, in making it happen. So we're very, very thankful for what we just experienced. I do have to say, I, I like winter. I, I would love to have another big snow, but I would only ask that it's on a long weekend, and we have to make no decisions about school. <laughs> But we really do appreciate all your input and feedback on social media <laughs> to help us make these decisions. Um, tonight we're going to provide you uh, with what is the state of the school. I, I did make a comment Saturday night and said, well, after what we experienced, uh, I think the state of the school is good, so maybe we don't even need to have an address. Uh, but we are going to give you more information. We're going to talk about our strategic plan that we're just coming to the end of and, and see how did we do, talk about rolling out the next strategic plan as well and what that will that will look like and then the opportunities that lie before us. So before we continue further, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we do thank you for tonight and we thank you for Fellowship Christian School. We thank you that it was your idea so many years ago and that you've involved us in this great story that you're writing here. And Lord, as we talk about the state of this school, we look at the business side and the education side, we pray most of all that you would be honored and glorified that it would be clear that we have attempted to uh, reflect your principles and, and, uh, and how you would lead this school. Thank you for those that were part of that strategic plan years ago, and, and then we look forward to coming together to write a new strategic plan and following your lead and what you have for us. So first of all, may you glorify yourself, and I pray, Father, that we would all be encouraged by the story here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the word covenant in the Old Testament is used more than 230 times. Um, I'm not a, a, a Hebrew um, professional and an expert, and it's used over 30 times in the New Testament. But the word covenant means agreement, that people are God and his people are coming to a mutual agreement. And as Fellowship Christian School is a covenant Christian school, it means that we are in agreement with each other. We're in a partnership with each other. First of all, we're agreeing that the Bible is God's word. It's his word to us. And secondly, that we are agreeing that Jesus Christ is the only hope of our salvation, and he made that possible through his death on the cross for our sins. So that is the covenant part of who we are. As you know, Fellowship Christian School's mission is to partner with Christian parents and the education of their children to raise up generations of students who will embrace biblical truth, strive for academic excellence, who will demonstrate discipline, exhibit leadership and influence in their homes, churches, and communities. Now, the, the board of Fellowship Christian School, as you know, we're a policy governance school, and it is the board who establishes the policies, and it's mine and my team's job to uh, make sure we are in compliance with those policies. And they have stated six different ends. What, what are we going after? And those six ends are addressing students' spiritual growth. What are we doing to make sure, to ensure we're doing everything we can to help our students grow? That we are giving them academic challenge. We have academic rigor in place for from our little pre-K students all the way through our seniors. We are giving them opportunities to develop athletically as well as artistically, that we are involving them or giving them opportunities to um, have community service 
opportunities and engagement, and also to be aware of and engaged in, in the global society around them, which isn't as, as difficult, especially when they're using their devices. It's like, no, why don't you come back locally? We know that you're, you have friends in you know, Yugoslavia or wherever it may be, but why don't, why don't you have some real friends here in the area? So that's not as difficult. Now these statements provide the structure upon which our current strategic plan was written. So there were four parts to it. There was the education part, the community part, administration and finance, and then facilities and infrastructure. So this is, I don't know if you all remember it, but this was the strategic plan. This was what it looked like in 2013 when it was first rolled out. So this is the thing that I've been holding near and dear to my heart. Uh, I actually was part of uh, writing this strategic plan before I became head of school. And uh, it's, been, it's been very encouraging and it's been challenging to make sure that what our team, our committee, decided this should be our strategic plan that now that I'm tasked, uh, tag, I'm it. <laughs> but five years ago, Jeff McClendon, who was at that time a board member, he recently rolled off, and he was also the chair of the strategic plan committee. Uh, he inspired our, our school community. Actually, I was flying back from a a trip to Costa Rica from our school, and I did not get to hear his very inspiring message. I, I heard a lot of people talk about, wow, he hit it out of the ballpark, and I think, oh, I missed it, and I don't think we filmed it either. But uh, many of you served on the development of the strategic plan. In fact, if you were in a focus group at that time, could you raise your hand? So there were a few of you who were on focus groups that helped to develop this plan. We thank you for that. So tonight we want to see, since we're at the end, it was 2013 to 2018, how did we do? Did we, it did was like, oh man, let's not bring that out. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't do so well. So it's five years later. If you're like me, sometimes you go to the end of a book, or maybe you did as a child, maybe you still do, and go to the end book, well, how, how's it going to end? Do I even want to read this thing? So going to the end of this, or maybe you, for, you do book reviews, or movie reviews, or restaurant reviews, so to see what other people are saying. Well, I thought it would be good for us to kind of go to the end of, of our strategic plan and see how we did. There was a campus master plan in here that we have accomplished many of the projects that were outlined, and then we've adjusted them along the way. And, and some of you have reminded me, but you said that we were going to, no, those were the other committee members that said that. I, I didn't <laughs> agree. <laughs> no, we did make some adjustments along the way. We, we had to accommodate student and program needs. Uh, also, because of your belief and investment in what God is doing here, we were able to accomplish this. You see, you are the heroes. You as parents, our faculty and staff, they're the heroes. This is, was God's vision we believed, and we still believe. And, and so you as a school community, you truly are the heroes in the fellowship story. I want to begin by taking a look at the financial picture over these past five years. We're going to begin with either good or bad news, depends on, on how you view it. But please welcome Mr. Ross Ramsey, our chairman of the board, to explain that to us. How about a hand for Kathy, just uh, in terms of her fearless leadership for us? Thank you, Dr. Teston. That's fun to say, Dr. Teston. Um, with that, let me go ahead and uh, address a few of just the, the basics that I think you will enjoy uh, just being aware of. Um, in fact, some of this centers around uh, projects that we're all enjoying and one of which we're sitting in this evening, uh, but then also looking at the debt picture um, of where we stand as a school. Um, so if we go back and we look at February of 2015, so really three years ago before we started the capital campaign, we had uh, a, a loan on the old building, on the, what's now currently the elementary and middle school building, that was tied to the acquisition of that building and the build out of that building, that at that time was almost $7.3 million in debt. Um, we also had an addition that we had put on for the middle school, uh, which is now over on the third floor above um, our old building, that at that time, three years ago, we had a little over 700000 in debt on that addition that we put on to that, to that part of the facility. So if we go back three years ago, we had a little bit over $8 million in debt, and a lot of that was just to build out the facilities we had at that time and to make sure that we were able to um, handle programming for elementary and middle school um, in, in terms of those buildings where we are today. So we have a great art room over there. I know Tripp and Ari and his team have, have thoroughly enjoyed 
uh, being able to use that art studio, and that's been a great addition to our programming as a school. So at that point in time, we were kicking off the One Capital campaign. And so in the spring of 2015, um, we really were starting to get into the public phase of the capital campaign. And I tell you, as I went back and even reflected on these numbers, it's just a tremendous praise to think about what our community did to come together to raise the amount of money that we were able to raise over the last three years. So here we are three years ago. By the end of December of that year, of December 2015, we had over $2.1 million in cash in hand. Again, we had other pledges and things that people had made, and they said, hey, we're going to do this over the next two to three years. But praise God, we had over $2.1 million in cash as of the end of 2015. By the end of 2016, again, gifts continued to come in, and we had over $3.8 million at that point. And then here we sat at the end of December, just this past, uh, past month, and we had received over $5.4 million in cash and stock gifts from our fellowship community. So on, on behalf of the board, I have to say thank you to all of you that are here in the room tonight, as well as those of you that are uh, going to watch this online. Um, we are so grateful for the generosity that you demonstrated over these past three years to, for one, be able to sit in this very building tonight. So thank you. And I think it's important for us to note that we still have over three quarters of a million dollars in outstanding pledges um, that people are continuing to pay on. And, and we recognize the fact that people have said, hey, here's the schedule of which I'm going to be able to fulfill my pledge. So again, thank you for those of you that are continuing to fulfill those pledges. It's, it's critical for us as we continue to see, uh, see us to the end on this capital campaign. So when you think about the amount of money that came in, what did those projects, what did those monies fund? What were the projects that we have seen come to reality? And so you think about it, I've already talked about this very building uh, with the STEM lab, uh, the digital media, the, the visual, um, the visual arts. We also have the turf field that all of our kids are enjoying. It's fun to see the, the elementary, the middle, the high, uh, all the different students using it, whether it's for practices or just uh, when they have free time. And so that's been such a great, gathering spot for our community. And then uh, I think we, we can't go without noting that we have added additional parking as part of $14.8 million of improvements that were made to our campus. So again, we have made almost $15 million in improvements through the capital campaign just in this facility, the turf field, and the adjacent parking. In addition, um, we had to take a hard look at making sure that our old building was ready to receive the elementary students and continue to serve our middle school con uh, constituency. And so with that, praise God, the gifts had come in enough that we were able to pay over $3 million in cash to fulfill the renovation of that building for our elementary students, as well as to build a playground to get the media center where it needed to be, um, what we used to lovely call the library, and also have exterior painting, interior painting, and a, and a good bit of landscaping done. So again, praise God that we had the cash in hand, did not have to go out and finance any additional debt to be able to handle that aspect of the campaign. And then finally, we have had some designated gifts come in for the stadium, and you'll hear a little bit more about uh, the stadium here in a little while. Um, but we have spent over $80,000 on going before the Roswell Design Review Board and uh, getting the stadium to a point where, um, from a seating capacity standpoint, we have all of the design done and approved by the city. So uh, again, thankful for that. So again, when we think about these improvements, we had existing buildings, um, but when we put all of these additions on, on top of the existing structures, our fair market value of assets at this point is over $40 million. And so, again, we as a board take the stewardship of those assets very, very seriously and are thankful that, that you've entrusted us to represent you and making sure that we are taking care of these assets accordingly. Um, so, as of the end of the year, um, I just want to bring you up to speed on where we stand with our current debt picture. Um, when we look at the old building um, that we have just renovated, Yes, we spent a lot of cash to make sure that we, we brought it up to speed, um, got it to where it needed to be for our current elementary and middle school students. 
um, but we still have been paying down on a note that right now totals a little bit more than $6.3 million. And that loan um, will be up for uh, refinancing in the summer. So we are already talking to different lenders about making sure that we get good terms. We've got great terms now, but again, just because of the timing of it, we need to make sure that we have good terms going forward uh, from a cash flow standpoint. Um, one of the things that I think you should be very aware of is that the board is very committed to making sure that as we are able to, let's pay off debt ahead of schedule. And so I'm, I'm excited to tell you that we were able to pay off that seven hundred and some thousand dollar note that you saw a few minutes ago ahead of schedule so that there is no longer any debt on that third floor addition that was done. So again, that was something that the board was very committed to in making sure that we were able to pay off ahead of schedule. And then finally, this building that we're in today, um, we, we basically have very good terms on it. Um, the note for this building along with the field and the parking is a little over $12 million. Um, this is something that we have built into our budget. And so from a cash flow standpoint, this is not a surprise to us. Um, we'll be talking more about all the benefits that have come with this building. But again, this is something that uh, as a board we have been able to build into our budget. And I think we'll transition nicely into what Kathy wants to talk to you next about operating and operating costs. So, Kathy. Um, by the way, I wanted to, if you haven't seen this already, I meant to mention this before, that uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end if, you'll, if you want to ask some questions. There's a number here that you can text, text questions to. Also, if you are watching uh, via the live stream, you can find that number uh, either in the email that went out or on the website or social media. So uh, you can be asking questions. We have uh, some of our people here who are helping to answer those questions for you. Uh, Ross, thank you for your leadership of the board. And Ross stepped into this position in July, I think it was. So we thank you for your leadership. And I would like for you and the other current board members to stand so we can see you and thank you. So. The current board members, if you would stand, please. Thank you. Thank you all for your service, and we really appreciate it. Some of our, actually, our board members are sick with the flu, and I'm sure that it's impacted some of your families as well, so you can be praying for them. I uh, want to also thank Ron Hagler. He was our board chair for and on the board for seven years total. Is that right? And so we thank you for your leadership. You rolled off in in July, and I have other projects for you to do, of course. Uh, but thank you, Ron, for your service to our school as well. We really appreciate that. <laughs> well, it's a business side of fellowship that enables us to do what our main thing is, which is education. You're, you send your children here for education, but we have to have the business side in place. So I wanted to look at, well, where does the money go? Where, where does it come from, and then where does it go? So the first slide we want to look at is our tuition income. Um, I don't know if you realize it, but th all of our operating expenses are paid totally by tuition and the fees that we receive. It's 100%. So th the tuition income you see is 94%, our registration fees, 1% contributions, 1% student fees like athletic fees and other fees that we have. So for, for tuition and fees, it covers 100% of our budget. And you see our budget is $11.4 million. That's the total budget. So the, the exciting thing is when, when, we go, when I go to conferences and people are talking about the gap that they have and what do you do to fill the gap, it's so wonderful to be able to say, well, we don't have a gap. You know, We have an annual fund, but it's not to fill a gap. Our tuition and our fees pay our operating budget completely, which in the operating budget is obviously our debt. So we are paying off our debt. We don't have an extra uh, pot over here, unless one of you are going to play the lottery or something, but we don't have an extra pot that pays the debt. The debt is included. So let's go to where our expenses are. We have uh, instructional will include uh, paying our teachers as well as curriculum, anything to do with instruction, facilities, 18% staff and admi administration, 23% uh, student services, programs, technology, administrative, advancement. Advancement is um, admissions, development, marketing, communication. That's the advancement. So that, that makes up 100% of that's where, that's where the pie goes. Um, and again, our operating budget is $11.4 million. If you have questions about that later, we can uh, answer those for you. But uh, we'll go ahead and move on. 
So also included in our budget annual fund. Now the board is 100% in this year. Our faculty and staff are 100% in up to this point. Parents are 54% in. At the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, but that is our parent participation through the years. You notice our, our goal for the past many years has been $500,000. That's, that's what we set. Those are the any projects. Again, the annual fund is simply, it's kind of like the frosting. It's the extra. We don't have to have it, but it's nice to have it to pay for the extras that we would dream of and hope to be able to do. Sometimes our, our um, um, annual fund is paid for some renovations that we had to do. If you remember that house that we demolished, well, we had to do some renovation to move people out to be able to move people in and so on. So anyway, um, those are some things that the annual uh, fund has paid for. But in the last couple years, you notice that our, our, not our percentage of parent participation, you guys have, have maintained that 90 and, and above. Thank you so much. That's what we really need so that when we go to a foundation that they can see how invested are your parents. We can say, or well, our annual fund every year, not just our capital campaign, but every year we have 90% uh, uh, parent participation, which is great. They expect board 100% and faculty and staff 100%. I attribute the, the dip there in our annual fund to we had a capital campaign going. And when you have you know, money that you want to give to a ministry, you're going to think, okay, and oftentimes people say, where do you need it more? And you know, at the time, well, it depends. Okay, this time, right now, we need capital campaign because we need some cash flow. Other times, well, we really need for you to give to the annual fund because we need the parent participation. Um, Daily Foster is working very hard to, to increase the parent participation and to reach our goal of $500,000. Um, this year, we're using, uh, we are still paying for those lockers out there, some uh, technology, uh, IT for uh, devices for elementary, middle, and high. We're using it for Winterfest. We're using it for uh, arts. We uh, were able to, by the way, the sound's being installed today. If those of you who saw that we had to rent the sound for FCS Live is being installed today, right, Dr. Moorcraft? <laughs> yes, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, we have a wish list that goes up to 500,000. We, we, we really need to pay for these. It's around 300,000, so we're filling that gap with some other projects, but that's the annual fund. Let's go on to the goal slide. Um, the goal is, is <coughs> if you don't participate in goal, I strongly encourage you to do it. It's not a gift. It's just telling the state of Georgia, the state taxes that you must pay, you're not exempt, but you must pay, you are redirecting them to Fellowship Christian School. Um, you, don't, you can't direct them to a particular student, but you are directing them to a particular school, which would be our school. We have, uh, let's see, we have, um, <laughs> I look at my husband. I'm trying not to say um, okay? So I'm, I'm just really, <laughs> he's giving me that look. <laughs> so goal, $1,000 for single uh, people, up to $2,500 for couples, and up to, I think it's $10,000 for corporations. So it's, it's kind of a no-brainer that you want to, you want to read, you want to tell the, the state of Georgia, I want my taxes are up to this amount to go to Georgia Gold. Now, how do people receive Georgia Gold monies? They have to apply for it. There are certain criteria that the, the state of Georgia requires. Their income can't be as, over a certain amount and, um, you know, assets and, and um, uh, debits and, and those sorts of things. There's just certain criteria that they have to apply for, and they can only receive a certain amount. They don't, no one is here on a free ride. Uh, none of our goal participants uh, are here and not paying. They have to pay part of the tuition. That's, that's a Georgia Goal thing, and that's a Fellowship Christian School thing. So this will show you how many participating families, families like Mike and me, who have said that we want to redirect our taxes to Georgia Goal, and then how many of our students through the years are receiving goal money. It is a great opportunity for us to be a blessing to other families that are covenant Christian families. They want to be here because they believe in what we're doing. They want the opportunity for Christian education for their children. It's just they can't afford the whole, the whole bill. And so they, they can afford part of the bill, just not the whole bill. So this gives you the opportunity to be a blessing to other people. Continuing. We'll come to that in a moment. Thank you. 
Well, we've achieved the administration finance goals outlined in our strategic plan, I want to draw attention to our tuition increase. I was like, ugh. Um, this is in comparison, you can go ahead and put it up. This is in comparison to other schools. I hope that you can see this down here. Can you read this down here? I'll read across real quickly, and they're not always in this order, but generally speaking. So we have Bridgeway, Qu Queen of Angels, North Cobb Fellowship, Mount Bethel, Kings Ridge, Mount Pisgah, Whitfield, Mount Vernon, and Walker. So this is full day kindergarten tuition. We're right here. This is how we compare to the other schools. For instance, North Cobb would be 5% less than what we are, and then on that side, that's the percentage above our tuition for full day kindergarten. So you can see where we are compared to other schools. Let's go on to elementary, please. This is our elementary school tuition. Here's fellowship right here, and then you see how we compare to the other schools, Christian or private schools, but ones that you would be familiar with, ones that you chose us over them. Thank you. Uh, middle school tuition, this is fellowship right here. And this is how our middle school tuition compares to the others. And then go on to high school. Our high school tuition, fellowship is right here. And comparative. Now, I, I realize, that, and, and the board realizes that, and I will say that this is the most difficult thing that we do every year, every November, is deciding Okay, are we going to have a tuition increase? And if we are, what, what, is it, what can it be? What does it need to be? What does it have to be? Can we keep it as low as possible? Let's make sure we're paying our, all of our expenses because our operating budget pays all of our expenses, not planning for a gap. And there is a lot of conversation that goes around the tuition increase. Do we have to? If we do, how much? We also realize that when we go from elementary to middle, and middle to high, there's an additional jump. For instance, I know that in our family, my one granddaughter is going from fifth grade to sixth grade. So the, even though there was a 4% tuition increase for elementary and middle, and a 5% for high, going from elementary to middle, th it feels like an, a, an even bigger jump. So we realize that. We would love to narrow that gap, um, but we're doing, the board and I are doing our best to try to keep tuition affordable, which is one of our core values, and also cover our expenses. So, uh, we'll take questions on that later if you want. Um, our business model finances what takes place within our walls, on our campus, and beyond. In addition to the amazing facilities that your gifts and tuition have provided, you've also funded state-of-the-art technology, which we're enjoying tonight with all that you see here and the cameras that are rolling, and our devices. Just imagine where our world was only five years ago when it comes to technology. We're going to put a slide up here to remind you of some of the amazing things. Do you, do you have one of these at home, Alexa? If you have kids or grandkids, they're always talking to Alexa. Alexa, play the happy birthday song. I don't want to hear the happy birthday song again. <laughs> our self-driving cars, any of you have one of those yet? Tesla, <laughs> 3D printing, we have what, three of those I think down in the STEM lab, is that right, Mr. Skripka? And then uh, virtual reality, I, I was on a virtual reality that, uh, wasn't it a VR? Where's, where are you, Kevin? Kevin, it, um, the, the VR, he had one of these things and you know, you go into this and you, then you walk a plank, I said, I'm not walking a plank because I'm afraid of heights even though I'm just standing on the floor <laughs> like this. <laughs> Very, very cool thing. And those, our kids know these. Our kids are, are talking about all these devices and these innovations. And we, we thank you so much for being part of that here. So we're grateful for our IT department, for what they have provided for us, the support that they give to the teachers' wishes and dreams. And teachers never lack for wishes and dreams, so IT department never finishes their to-do list. Um, we also are grateful for what our facilities team and Officer Bennett uh, does for us to protect our environment, to protect us. So how well did we accomplish our education goals? We've talked about business and we've looked at, we've got debt and we've got, you know, we, we have a balanced budget and we've got an $11.4 million budget and everybody's being paid and nobody's waiting to, to get a paycheck or, you know, to, to write a check for their business. But how did we do on education? When I think of education, I think of, okay, it's the information that we're giving students the environments that we're creating, knowing their learning style, who they're with. And there's so much about education that is much more than teaching and reading and writing. We don't do arithmetic math and 
Spanish or you know, English or coding, what they're doing in CAD, whether it's in the arts, dance, other music, ath athletics, they're on the field or court or track, they're in a club, after school. It's all about relationship, isn't it? I mean, you, you bring your children to school, you either bring them or you drop them off and you're either praying for your children or you're praying for those who on the other side are receiving your children. <laughs> We're so grateful for Ms. Milton who still hugs and, and loves on the kids when they get there, but you're, you're just praying. It's, it's about relationship. You, you want the people on the other end of what you're sending to love your child the way that you do, to see the potential in your child the way that you do. I love being an educator. I go out in the halls and classrooms as often as I can to remind myself of why we do what we do. Because these children are image bearers of the Creator. And it's our job, in partnership with you, you've chosen us as your partners in education, to help figure out, help them figure out, help you figure out, what are, th what are they designed to do? What is God's purpose for their lives? What did he have in mind for each of those children? And as they grow and they develop, so, you know, it, it's a whole lot more than disseminating of, of information. I mean, Siri can do that and Google. They can get the answer a lot faster than we can spit it out. Our, our role as educators is so much different than it was when I first started teaching. It's no longer, you know, I'm, I'm the sage on the stage and, you know, they're wide-eyed wondering what's going to pour out of my mouth. It's not that way anymore. We are there to prompt them, to, to inspire them, to help them to be curious, to ask them questions. In many ways, ask more questions than provide answers. Because they can get an answer to a question. We want them to learn to think, to problem solve. And in all of this, just like when, when they were little, and, and you read them Bible stories, and you sang to them, and you prayed for them, we are, we are part of what you began so many years ago. We are just that extension. We are saying the same things that you said to them when they were little. And so our partnership means everything. That's the covenant that we have together. That's what education is, no matter where it's taking place here at Fellowship Christian School. We want you to trust us not anything we say, but trust that we, we want to do this together because the children belong to you. They don't belong to us. We'd adopt them in a heartbeat. But they belong to you. And you are the ones that will stand before Jesus, no pressure, on, how, on what you did with their education. And we're very grateful. You've heard me say it a million times. We are so grateful you choose us because we know, obviously, you have a lot of choices. We want you to know that we have their best interests in mind. Together, we are preparing them for their future, which we probably have no idea what it's going to look like. When we looked at those innovations in the last five years, oh my goodness, what do we want to do? We want them to help, help them develop that biblical worldview grid that they see through a lens of biblical principles, of biblical truth, never compromising on that. Recently, I was talking to uh, the faculty and staff about, you know, the, the difference between acceptance and agreement. That we can, we can accept one another. Doesn't necessarily we have to agree, but we can accept, never compromising on what God's word said, what it says, <laughs> the truth. So I want more than anything in the education, we talked about the business side, but the education side, I want, I want you to know that we're humbled you choose us, and it's an ongoing conversation. Whenever we're talking about something we're not agreeing on, or a problem, or a situation, or an issue, whatever it is, it's an ongoing conversation. It's not a one-off that, okay, fix that, check. No, that's not, that's not how life is, is it? If you're married, you don't solve a, a, an issue you have with your spouse once and never have to revisit it if the other spouse would just cooperate all the time. <laughs> no, it's an ongoing conversation, just like this is. And if, if you're upset with us, please let us know. We want an opportunity to be able to address it with you, because we honor you. You truly are the heroes, because you've chosen us. 
and our faculty and staff are the heroes because they get it. So that's the education side of what we do. We've also, uh, in our strategic plan, talked about our, our hiring processes. And we've uh, developed an onboarding process, which we helps with the transition. I know that we can do a better job vetting and in our hiring processes. I just want you to know that I know, and my team knows, that we could do a better job in our hiring processes. And we're committed to that. Most importantly, we want our, our hires to know Jesus as Savior. Just as we have covenant parents here, so we have covenant faculty and staff. So that's it that they are fully devoted to the mission of our school. They're not about what, it's something else uh, in education. They are about what Fellowship Christian School is about. And that they are wanting to be difference makers, not just to impact students' lives, but to make a difference in students' lives. So let's look at the education accomplishments since 2013. I think it'll be like, well, that's great. Yes, thank you, fellowship. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? That's what you all have done. Well, the fourth thing that we looked at in the strategic plan was community. In uh, September of 2016, we had sent out a survey and said, when you think of fellowship, what are some top words that you think of? And we were glad that two of them clearly emerged to the top. It was, uh, it was a community and family that you, when you experience fellowship, that's what you think of. It's a community, it's a family, because that's what we want you to experience. We want for children to be able to feel like it's almost like an aunt and uncle that's here looking out after them, taking care of them. Not just a Mr. and Mrs. or a doctor, but like an aunt and uncle that they can go to anybody. And I want to reassure you what you want for your children is what we want for your children. You've heard me say before, how in the world can, can a, a teacher, an educator, or, you know, a principal, how can, they, how can they love my child? I don't know how it happens, but God just puts that love in our hearts for your children. 
And when it gets to, it to May and the end of the school year, I can tell you that teachers are like, no. And sometimes we loop with them because we just can't part with them. <laughs> we, we love them so much because we see them as wonderful and amazing image bearers of the Creator. And we are just grateful and thankful that God allows us to play even a small part in their lives. It's not just the subject that we teach. That's just, that's just what we do. It's more importantly connecting with their hearts and their minds and their souls because we love them and we want good for them just like you do. So as we look back over the last five years, how did we do with our strategic plan? Our assessment says we did very well. Is there room for improvement? Oh yes, there is. Did we stay within our guardrails? We did. Does the 2013-18 strategic plan position us well for our next five-year strategic plan? Absolutely it does. In fact, I want to talk a little bit about that in the few minutes that remain. Similar to the development of this current strategic plan, we will form focus groups to work on the next five-year plan. We're on a, a, a bit of a, a tight time frame right now because we have our reaccreditation process starting. And so we will begin forming these groups uh, and be able to present to the Board of Directors a strategic plan in the fall of 2018. We do have a, a great marketing company that is coming to help us with the initial stages of this, but the development of the plan will be ours. So there are a lot of opportunities, opportunities for you. One thing I've learned in my 14 years here is that we have an incredible group of parents. We have amazing people who have unbelievable expertise and perspectives and knowledge and wisdom that we want to lean into and leverage. So we are going to ask you to please be on focus in focus groups to help us write the proposal for this next strategic plan. But speaking of opportunities, I want you to turn your, your attention again to the screen and to hear Ross Ramsey narrate some wonderful opportunities. Don't fall asleep now because you'll want to see these opportunities. As we look forward to the execution of our next five-year strategic plan, there are a number of opportunities before us. Over the next few minutes, I will lay out some of the building possibilities for your information. It is important to note that the One Capital Campaign currently has more than $200,000 in its account with over $700,000 in outstanding pledges. The first project is upgraded seating for the stadium. The plans call for a concrete foundation with aluminum seating at a cost of approximately $700,000. To date, we have received over $100,000 in funds designated specifically for this venture. It is important that we create a great fan experience for all events with easy to negotiate seating no matter what your age. Closely associated with stadium seating is adding a press box and grand entrance for Bob Lord Field. This facility would include restrooms, concessions, and the Paladin Spirit Store to accompany the press, video, and scores area. We estimate a cost of $1.2 million to complete this project. The Commons Building will one day be located in the center of our campus. It will house our chapel, performing arts venue, dining hall, kitchen, and community coffee bar. In light of increasing construction costs, the current anticipated cost for this building is $8.3 million. The Fellowship Christian School Board of Directors feels a strong responsibility for the stewardship of all resources the Lord and our fellow families entrust to us. With this in mind, consideration is currently underway to evaluate whether or not we would be better stewards if we brought the currently leased Paladin Center onto campus to become an asset of the school. To do so, we would construct a field house adjacent to Bob Lord Field that would house all items currently at the Paladin Center, plus locker rooms and a much needed third gymnasium. The school is currently researching the financial aspects of building such a facility. 
Lastly, it is with great enthusiasm that I report to you that building our new high school building has accomplished one aspect of what we had hoped, to attract more families who want to raise up their children to be all that God has created them to be. In light of this and recognizing our current master plan's desire to increase enrollment, we need more classroom space. With demand for our high school learning experience growing so fast, we need to have eighth grade join our other middle school students. Ideally, we would have been able to build a larger high school building to start, but we had to value engineer the project to stay in budget. As we navigate the consideration of space, it is first and foremost on the minds of our leadership team to maintain excellent learning environments for all divisions while we create more spaces for new students. The projected cost for additional classroom space located between the hitting tunnel and the elementary school entrance is currently $2.2 million. We praise God to even have this dilemma as new families are already applying for admission for the 2018-19 academic year. I have shared a lot of detailed information over the past few minutes. On behalf of the Board of Directors, Dr. Kathy Teston and her leadership team, we covet your thoughts and prayers as we desire to completely follow God's will with regard to these opportunities before us. Do not hesitate to reach out to Kathy or our Board of Directors with any questions you may have. May all of this be to His glory. Wow. And that's our drone, too. <laughs> Another innovation. I said, how high was that thing? <laughs> it was very high. Well, I hope that year, this update of the 2013-18 strategic plan has been encouraging. I hope it's been inspiring, affirming that uh, what we thought we would be doing, we have pretty much done or been able to do, and, and we're excited about that. As you know, this is re-enrollment time. And I want to remind you that midnight on Friday, uh, that is the deadline. After that, then you will be paying the extra $250 for the registration. So make sure that you get your re-enrollment. I will tell you also that uh, we are about two and a half times uh, new applications this year of what we had last year. So we have a lot of interest in our school. I want to make sure that your children have their spot, especially as we look at elementary and middle and making sure that uh, we keep our class sizes uh, what we want and not go over, but we are limited in those spaces as well. So this building, I will tell you, the eighth grade will be moving into that building so that we can help this building do what it was designed to do and we can expand our arts program as well. So um, it's time for some Q&A. So Ross, would you like to come up here and answer all the questions while <laughs> I support you? <laughs> that we have. One of the questions, what's the current enrollment and what is the target enrollment? We currently have 857 students as of today. We, it's kind of a floating enrollment. I'll look at the enrollment sheet and there's five in process. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have new students still coming. And then it, the way that we have the classrooms configured right now, it's 965 capacity at this point. Uh, why does FCS not offer full day pre-K? Is there a plan to make that happen? We are not licensed as a, like a daycare. You have to have certain uh, facilities. You have to have an outdoor entrance and a, and a gated, uh, like a playground area. So you have to be able to access the playground right from the building. So there, uh, there's certain criteria from the state of Georgia for us to have, to be able to offer that for four-year-olds or, or younger. And do we have plans to make that happen? Uh, not at this time, we don't. We're looking at some other options. And in fact, Sherry McElroy, you're, I saw you, there you are. Uh, Sherry and I have been going back and forth about what, what could we do? We know what the state of Georgia tells us that we, what we can't do. What are some possibilities of what we could do in uh, talking to some of our sister schools about how they negotiate this? So do you want to do the next? I'll take the next, next one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> next question, are there any plans to purchase real estate for expansion and or practice fields? Uh, what I will tell you is that we have a real estate committee uh, that serves under Kathy's leadership uh, to always be examining opportunities around us, whether it's very close by or in the general vicinity. Um, so we are, as a real estate committee, continually to look, looking at ways that we can acquire land close by um, to be able to use for practice fields or uh, future campus expansion. 
Okay. Next question, what are the plans to expand the music program in middle school? That's, we are discussing that now, uh, planning on making some hires for some programming that we're talking about, music, um, whether it is uh, instrumental music or choral music or dance. We know that in middle school, right, Mr. Tackard? In middle school, we are, we are deeply uh, in need of opportunities to help students to expand, that we have drama in middle school and we have a praise band in, in middle school, we have a talent show in middle school, but we don't have uh, a music program per se, and we're looking to hire to that for the fall of 2018. Okay. If I want to be a part of, should I read it first? Or yep. <laughs> you got this one. Okay, if I want to be a part of the strategic plan focus groups, who do I contact? We will give you that information. Be looking for that information. You can go ahead and give me your name. I'll take names tonight if you want me to. Um, but if you can go ahead and start sending that to me if you have a particular area of interest, but we will be pushing out an invitation to do so within the next month. We will, we will start that. Again, we, we're on a tight time frame. It will take us through the summer, but it's like a six month process. Uh, so we want to make sure that we go ahead and get started and start forming those groups and that focus of what it's going to look like. Okay, any live questions here? I'll see one more here. Okay. Uh, where will the Commons building be located? So can you, you may go back to that slide? Oh, we can't because it's a video. Okay. Um, you may remember um, there's a space right now um, that's in between this building, the turf field. Thank you, Diana. Um, so in this area here, in between the existing entrance to elementary school, right outside of Sherry's office and the drive-through. Uh, we have the architectural design and, and um, all the drawings that we need at this point to build a uh, over 20,000 square foot uh, building here that will have a dining hall and a kitchen on the lower floor. And then the upper floor would be um, for performing arts and chapel. Um, so that has already been drawn out with the architects that we hired to do this very building. And um, it would be located in this space here. Okay, I have a question here um, asking about textbooks for all classes specifically for math. And I'm guessing that might be math in middle school. Uh, I don't know if this is a live question or, or someone uh, live streaming, but I will tell you it has been quite a process. The, the math, you would think, why, how does math change? You know, uh, two plus two is still four, and you know, you still have the different, you know, geometric shapes and angles and all that stuff. I'm a math teacher, so is Mr. Tackard. Um, we have found that uh, the, there was you know, Common Core, Georgia embraced Common Core, Georgia then did Georgia Milestones, and then they're on to something different. As a school, we are not bound to standards, although we align ourselves with Georgia State standards, with national standards, and I think in math we're doing also Michigan uh, standards. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, we're covering all the bases when it comes to standards, that we're doing vertical teaming, that we're doing backward design. In other words, this, this class prepares you for this class, prepares you for this class. We don't want a teacher and say, you know, fourth grade saying, okay, I'm teaching you this in fourth grade and good luck in fifth, hope it works for you. We want to make sure that we are preparing our students. So with all of those changes that have taken place in the state of Georgia, with Fellowship Christian School not being a common core school and not doing anything that's, that's common core when it comes to, you know, with the philosophy that's behind it, with the thinking that's behind it. We want our students, uh, especially our high school students, to be able to identify and recognize oh, that's a common core kind of a question when they're doing a, an SAT or ACT test. So we want them to be familiar with that when it comes to our elementary and middle school students. We don't want them to be thinking common core. So it has been difficult to find textbooks, hardcover textbooks. And so we have done a lot of online curriculum. We have, uh, we, we've had standards, but it's been difficult to find the materials. And I think that we have ordered? Not yet. Not yet. We will. <laughs> and so we know that's been an ongoing um, issue. It's been ongoing angst. And I know for you as parents, it's been a difficult thing to try to manage. How in the world can I help my student if I don't even know what they have? I don't know where to go to find it. Um, I, I would 
so, so that is coming, but I would suggest that you meet with the teacher and with Mr. Tackard and, and find uh, where can I find what I need to find. Teachers should be putting links to uh, Georgia Virtual School. We've been using a lot of their resources. Uh, so the teacher is teaching. Uh, it's just hard for you as parents to help your children the way that it's been. So we recognize that and we are trying to address that and fix it. I hope that answers the question, but if there are more, if there's more on that, then we can talk about it. Okay, any other questions here? Nope. Do you have questions that you've not already submitted? Pass the offering, please. <laughs> uh, nothing? Is that it? All right. And it's 8 o'clock. I hope this means raving fans. You are our best advertisement. By far, mm -hmm. people come to our, our open houses, come to our school because of you. When we ask them, how'd you find out about our school? Well, my neighbor or the person who cuts my hair or the person who, it, it, it is you. So thank you so much for being such uh, great fans of our school. We want you to know that, that we know we're not perfect. And, and this is an ongoing journey and conversation, and we want you to know that our door is always open. As you've heard me say, it really is. My door is always open. <laughs> In fact, when, when my teammates come up and say, why is your door closed? Well, I was <laughs> well today I was working on this. Um, but uh, please, please know that we are in this together, and uh, please give us the opportunity for conversation and dialogue. So if there are no more questions, Mr. Ramsey, would you close our time? Yes, please? I'd be honored to. So. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity we have to come together to, to talk about fellowship, to talk about the work that you have done, continue to do, and will do through this school. We thank you for all that you've brought here at this time, uh, the parents, the students, the teachers, the coaches, all those that are assembled here, Lord, to, to do your work. Father, we pray that you go before us, Give the board wisdom as they look to how you would lead us. Empower Kathy and her leadership team as they make daily decisions. And Father, continue just to uh, support and lift up our teachers as they love and encourage and educate our children day in, day out. We are so thankful for them. And we pray all this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you.